this presentation, we will take a look at the journal entry related to issuing a bond at a premium. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. When considering the journal entry for a bond, remember what can change and what is the same for a bond. When we think about a bond, it's already been printed. We know the amount of the bond, the interest on the bond, the maturity date of the bond. These are already set. So if we're making a negotiation with the bond after it had already been printed, then we can't change the face amount. We can't change the interest the due dates. What can we change in order to negotiate and make a sales price on the bond? We can change the amount that we issue it for. So. Keep that in mind whenever you think about these bond problems. That's the thing that's going to differ from a bond to a note. The thing that changes when we want a loan is the interest rate. The thing that changes when we want to issue a bond that's already been made is going to be the amount we receive for the bond being different than the face amount of the bond if there's a difference in the market rate and the contract rate. So in this example, we're saying that we issued a bond now, note that when we think about the issuance of the bond, just like a note, we often have more information than we really need, and that can be a little bit confusing for us. Uh, so here we have the, the number of, of years on the bond, we've got the face amount of the bond, and we're actually given the issue price on the bond. And then we got the interest rate on the bond and the market rate. Now, if they give you the interest rate, I mean, if they give you the amount that you issue the bond for, then all this other stuff is not even needed, just like it is with a note. Like I don't even know, I don't need to know the interest, either the market rate or the, um, or the, the rate of interest on the bond in order to record the issuance of the bond if it's given to me how much we, we issued the bond for uh, because the interest will come into play when we make the interest payments at a later time as we incur interest, as time passes. What we do want to realize just from a theory standpoint, however, is the reason why we're issuing the price for 270 when the face of amount of the bond is 240. And that is because the face amount is what we're gonna pay back at the end of the term of the bond, just like a note. So normally you would say, you would think, hmm, well, we're gonna pay back 240 at the end. We would like 240 now. We'll pay you back the 240 at the end plus interest. But we're not gonna do that because the rate of interest on the bond difference from the market. Our bond rate, the contract rate, is 8%. We're going to be paying on this bond 8% of the 240000 But the market rate is only 5%, meaning other people could go elsewhere and only get a 5% return, and we're paying an, out an 8% return. So that means that we're going, we're going to say, well, that's too, we can't lower this to 5%. What we can do is say, well, you know, we're paying out more interest than other people are paying. So instead of getting the face amount, the 240, if you give us 270,000 now, we will give you back 240 at the end of the time period and we'll pay you out this higher interest rate to make up the difference, the 8% rather than what you would get elsewhere, which is just the 5%. So that's the reason for this. But if we record this out, we're just going to say, well, is cash affected? We're going to say, yeah, we got cash. That's why we're issuing the bond. We're the company. We're issuing the bond. Cash has a debit balance. We're going to make it go up doing the same thing to it. Note, it's always nice to have a trial balance here. So this is just a short trial balance just to show us something that is in balance as we issue these. So we've got debits um, being non-bracketed or positive, credits bracketed or negative, debits minus credits equaling zero, meaning debits equal the credits. And uh, the net income is currently 700,000 revenue, less zero expenses. That's, that's income, not a loss. So we're gonna debit cash, increasing the cash. That's why we're issuing the bond. And then we're gonna have the bond payable for the 240. 
Note the difference here. We only, we got 270. We got more cash than we owe at the end of the bond. We only owe 240. So there's a difference, of course, and that's gonna be the 30,000. And that's gonna to go to what we're gonna call a premium. It's gonna be the premium on the bond. So if we record this, we can see what it's gonna look like. The cash is here. Here it is on the trial balance. It's gonna go from 270, uh, 720,000 up by 272, 990,000. The bond is gonna go from zero up in the credit direction to 240. And then the premium, so here's the premium, is gonna go from zero up by 30 to 30,000. So what does this mean then? Well, of course we got cash, that's the point. And then we owe back 240,000 at the maturity of the bond. But then we have this other 30,000 that looks, you know, it's, it's part of this, meaning the carrying value of the bond, if we add those together, is actually gonna add up, of course, to the uh, 270. But the question then is, well, what are we gonna do with this premium? I mean, it has to go away at the end of the time period and we're not gonna pay it out at the end. We're only gonna pay 240,000. So as we pay interest payments, we're gonna reduce this premium at the same point in time periodically as we uh, record interest payments. We're gonna record it and reduce it as the bond goes through towards maturity uh, in the form of uh, interest expense. This should seem unusual because what's gonna happen is we're gonna have to credit, we're gonna have to debit this to make it go down and we're gonna credit interest expense, which is weird because interest expense is an expense and it only typically goes up. We're not really generating revenue here. But note what's really happening here. Why is that the case? Well, this premium is a result of the, the our interest payments of 8% being higher than the market rate. So really what's gonna happen is we're gonna pay out the 8% on the market, on the, uh, on the bonds here, because that's our contract price. But then we're gonna reduce it by the premium amount. And so really our interest payments are gonna be closer to the, to the market rate. We're kind of uh, putting that difference between the market rate uh, by reducing the premium. So when we record interest expense, we're gonna be increasing it by what we pay, the 8%, and then decreasing it by the allocation of the premium, which is really a result of that difference between the market rate and the contract rate. Also note, of course, there's no activity on the net income at this time. So it's all balance sheet accounts. We got cash, we owe back in the future. We will record the interest as we go through time, as we incur interest, as the, as the money is being used, that's when we're gonna record the interest expense in accordance with the matching principle.